Zero Accounting Software 2023 Deposits from Cash Clearing Account. Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation. That being Get Great Good Support Accounting Instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. TARS. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in that duplicated tab to once again duplicate. We're going to go back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. Let's go into that balance sheet report. As it's thinking, I'm going to tab to the right. Accounting drop down. This time the income statement or profit and loss report. As it's thinking, tab back to the middle and the range is going to change we're going to hit the drop down let's put a custom date range here and let's go for 2023 the end of 2023 it needs to be up to date so we'll update it and then tab into the right the income statement has the right range so that's good let's go to the tab to the left last time we have been entering transactions for invoices receive payments and uh, imagining money in forms for sales at like a cash register. We've been putting that back to the balance sheet over here into our uh, clearing account. So we made a clearing account, which is a holding account so that we can then transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account in the same format that will be shown on the bank statements. Now I want to point out, you might not need to do this uh, every time. It really depends on what your cycle is for your revenue recognition cycle. So let's take a quick look at that again on a flow chart. This is the QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at the flow chart of it to see the forms and the process. So we're in this uh, revenue cycle and note that how you deal with your your revenue cycle isn't just a, a choice that you make, it's the industry that you're in. So again, if you get paid by like YouTube, you're probably just gonna deposit the money that you receive from the platform and call it income, possibly with the use of bank feeds. But if you're collecting sales at a cash register or something like that, then you can't just wait till the money clears the bank because you're gonna have because you're gonna want to record the sales at the point of sale and tie that out to the physical account of cash that you have and deal with other payment processings that you might have like credit card uh, from this point and then make the deposit into the the checking account now this is where you're most likely to have to have this issue of possibly putting money into a clearing account as opposed to directly into the checking account so for example if you have a cash register and you're making multiple sales throughout the day, let's say they're cash sales that you're making, you're making credit card sales too, possibly, and the credit card company is gonna do a similar thing. But with the cash, I think it's more concrete to visualize. You're gonna be uh, collecting the cash. At the end of the day, you would wanna count the cash and see that it ties out to your uh, sales register tape, right? And then you're gonna deposit the cash, go to the bank physically, deposit the cash into the bank when it gets into the bank then it's not there as 105 dollar sales but rather one lump sum therefore we don't want to put it into our checking account when we make each five dollar sale because we won't be able to tie the checking account out to what is on the our books the bank statement won't tie out because it'll be in there as a lump sum therefore what we're going to do is put it into the clearing account and then when we make the physical deposit into the bank we will mirror that in our system taking that dollar amount out of our clearing account and depositing it into the checking account so the same kind of concept can happen with a credit card or payment processors because oftentimes they will collect the money and then the credit card company or whatever the payment processor will group those monies together and then deposit it into your account once again not with like 105 dollars amounts 
but with one lump sum amount. So you have a similar grouping problem that you have to deal with so that you can do the bank reconciliations, which are very important to do. And then if you have invoices, if you're invoicing someone, that means that you have to do the work first, like a law firm or an accounting firm, a landscaper, and then you invoice the client tracking the accounts receivable, they're gonna have to then pay you. Now note with the invoices, Xero has a nice kind of system that you can group multiple invoices together if you needed to. So it's less likely that you're gonna have multiple invoices grouped together than if you got cash receipts on, on at like a cash register, but it's possible that you can get multiple payments depending on what kind of system you have set up that are multiple invoices are gonna be grouped together when you then take that amount and put it into your bank account. So you might have this same clearing account issue when you receive the payments on the invoices. Zero has a nice system to be able to, to group the invoices together in the system, which would eliminate the need for the clearing account in that situation. However, you could still imagine multiple invoices and sales receipts that you're receiving and then you're gonna make one deposit. So you might still have a clearing account situation that you would need if your typical cycle is an invoicing cycle, although it's less likely than if you're at like a cash register situation. So if I go back on over first tab and I'm gonna go to the business dropdown and go down to the invoices so within the invoices remember we were awaiting payment on the invoices and we brought the invoices in what i mean by this is that you can select multiple invoices if they were going to be deposited together and that would kind of be one way to possibly deal with this grouping issue uh that with our, with our deposits needing to match out in a group to what's on the bank statement uh, but if you're receiving invoices and you're also getting money from sales receipts and whatnot that you're going to deposit together because they're all cash payments or something like that or a payment processor process them then you might have to group a little bit differently than that all right so we have them into our uh, account over here on the balance sheet and so now we're going to imagine that one grouping of this is going to be uh, is going to be we're going to have a deposit of uh, seven thousand five seventy eighty five, which is made up of the sales receipt for Sam the Guitar Man and String Music got grouped together. So what I'm going to do is is I think that there's going to be seven thousand five seventy eighty five of this clearing account amount that's going to go into the checking account at that one lump sum. So I'm going to transfer it from the clearing account to the checking account uh, in that dollar amount so that we can tie it out to the bank statements with either the bank fees and or bank reconciliation. Now, because we're, we're kind of going from one like checking account type of account to another, although one wouldn't have bank fees and the other would, you could use uh, multiple forms, right? You could say, well, it's a spend money form if you look at it from the perspective of the money that's going out of the clearing account, more likely you might use a receive money form because the, it's going into uh, the it, like a deposit because it's going into the the checking account. But you might use a transfer form because it's going out of two kind of uh, uh, checking type of account. So we'll go ahead and use a transfer form. If I hit the drop down, we want to go from it's going from the cash clearing account. It's going to the uh, checking account and we're going to say the date is on Jan Jan uh, 19 again I think was the day that we were doing this on and the amount is going to be 7570.85 and if you could put uh, like a reference of some kind like this is for Sam or the you know and and string music or if you're able to reference possibly the invoice number or transaction number that could be a useful tool here you've got the transfer transfer and add another let's go ahead and do the transfer and then we'll go up to the balance sheet looks like it did what we thought it should balance sheet update and then if i scroll down now we're in the cash clearing account let's uh dive into it drilling down on it and drilling down and we've got our transfer that happened where's the transfer here it is 
So it shows here as a bank transfer. Notice that's kind of nice because uh, th this will clearly show that it's a, a, a transfer transaction as, a, as opposed to, again, if you use like a receive payment or uh, a deposit form or an expense kind of form, then on one or the other side of these transactions, it'll look a little bit funny, right? Because you could end up with, uh, in, in this case, we have a decrease with the transfer. So if you used a deposit form, a receive money form in the normal checking account, then it might show as a receive payment form and be a decrease, which is weird. And that would be hard if you're trying to filter your transactions and whatnot, that would, uh, that would be an issue. Because if you're trying to look at your checking account and filter by all the increases, for example, you would think you'd be filtering by deposits. In other words, if I was hitting the filter button here and I filtered by this where they call it source, which is like the, the source document that was used to input. And I go into the, then you've got uh, your bank transfers versus your, uh, your money in and money out forms, right? So spend money form and receive money forms. So, so obviously if you're looking for increases to the bank account, you might have a receive money form. If you had a spend money form that was an increase to the bank account, then that would cause you problems when you're filtering things. So here you've got the transfers, which could be an increase or decrease depending on what side of the transfer we're looking at. All right, the other side, let's go to the other side and that's going to go into the checking account. So let's go into the checking and check out the checking. And here we have our transfer. So it looks good here. And now it's been put into our checking in this one lump sum, even though we're combining basically two payments that we've received because that's what's going to be on the bank statement. And we want to be able to tie out to the bank statement either with the bank feeds that we would need to match up to and or with the bank reconciliation, which are critical internal control tools. All right, let's do the rest of them and imagine we re we deposit the rest of these, which is the 20,500 in one lump sum. So I'm gonna transfer this into the checking account in one lump sum, as opposed to in essence, the three payments that are making up this. We have the three payments from Anderson, Jones and Smith that basically make up this 20,500 that we're imagining due to the payment processor or if they were cash payments, which that would be weird because they're large, but. Uh, and they're going to be deposited as one lump sum. So we're going to transfer that over. Let's go back to the first tab, hit the drop down, and we're going to transfer some more money. Transfer the money. We got the money flowing, people. The money is a flowing. Cash clearing account. It's going to go into the checking account as of January. January. Be wary of January. We're going to go to the 21st, and it's going to go for 20500. And then you might reference the invoice number or the payment numbers, but it's Anderson, Anderson, uh, Jones, and Smith invoices that are grouped together that I'm going to try to indicate with the with the reference, which might not be the best put, but that's where I'm going to put. It. So we're going to say, transfer it and let's check it out. So if I go back to the balance sheet and update again, because we want up to date stuff, notice that the uh, the clearing account has now disappeared because there's nothing in it anymore. So if I go into this checking account here and we're gonna drill down on the detail, drilling down on the detail, detail. So here we have them. So that looks good. So let's let's go back up and let's do a uh, trial balance. I'm gonna tab to the right, no impact on the income statement, by the way, because we just transferred the money out of the clearing to the checking, imagining that we're just basically taking the money that was in the holding account in some way, shape or form, either checks that we're holding on to cash that we're holding on to or money that we have uh, generated, but has not yet been processed by payment processors or credit cards and transfer them into the checking account. So no impact on the income statement because we've recorded the revenue related to that in the past when the transaction took place. So let's go to the accounting drop down. Let's look at our reports and type in trial balance because if you type it, it will come. And that's what we want to see coming here. The trial balance, typing it in so it will do so. Hitting the drop down up top. We want to customize that range. Bring it on up to 2023, the end of 2023. Update it, bring that report up to date. 
And then uh, if your numbers tie out, great. The change that we have made from the prior accounting system or the prior point that we were at at the end of the last presentation was the checking account. So the checking account, if your checking account is off, then that's the thing that would most likely be off if there was a problem. So try to change the range. You can increase uh, the date range and see if that is the issue. If it is, drill down on that number and then change the date.